Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, so, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is John. Uh, I'm the uh, Data Ops Team Lead at Geotab. Uh, I'm here today to share about our journey, uh, Data Ops journey at Geotab. <clears throat> so, Geotab is a global, global leader in telematics uh, with about 2.1 uh, million subscribed vehicles using our products and services. Uh, we are one of the very few telematics companies that make both hardware and software. Uh, for anyone who's not familiar, uh, familiar with the term telematics, it means that we use IoT devices and OEM softwares to collect data from vehicles to provide various products and services to help our customers. Uh, below are some examples on how we help our customers uh, to improve their fleet productivity optimization uh, enhance driver safety and achieve stronger compliance to regulatory changes. So, Geotab spent quite a bit of time uh, in 2019 on evaluation and DOC with commercial products like Libra, Lation, and Talent, uh, which they all had robust set of features uh, from data management governance perspective. Uh, but it didn't really take too long for Geotab to realize that it wasn't for us. Uh, although the outputs from these commercial products were fancy and shiny, uh, actual value add from using the product simply didn't outweigh the direct and indirect cost, like uh, vendor lock-in, customizability, uh, implementations, and service costs, and licensing fees. So I joined right after Geotem made the decision not to proceed with Calibra. Uh, and that's when I started looking at open source solutions from early 2020. Uh, I think most community members uh, from the uh, uh, use cases that they shared uh, from previous town halls, uh, most of us uh, had a very similar list of uh, open source products to evaluate from. And from, from those, uh, we shortlisted to Atlas, Amundsen, and Data. Uh, for our evaluation. Uh, functional and non-functional requirements were very important, but uh, one of the key evaluation metric, I think uh, we, uh, I wouldn't say unique, I'm sure like someone else also like looked into it, uh, but uh, key evaluation metric uh, that made us to select Data Hub uh, was approachability and technical capabilities of leading dev uh, developer, uh, leading dev team. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, as most of us know, uh, had solid, uh, have solid list of uh, open source pro uh, portfolio uh, that they designed and donated to Apache Foundation and also Data Hub team. Uh, they have been very approachable, responsive, and open during our evaluation phase. So from a very small uh, team at Geotab trying to tackle big problem, uh, those technical guidance and uh, support uh, were very important to us. So uh, our first uh, crack at uh, Data Hub, uh, we onboarded a small number of data sets, just over uh, 250, and had 60 users from one department to try out Data Hub. Uh, the result was somewhat disappointing. Uh, the adoption rate was very poor, uh, and feedback was discouraging. Uh, <laughs> From users' eyes, Data Hub wasn't any better than how they searched uh, data sets in Google BigQuery. Uh, for some, uh, it was useful, but there, were, there weren't enough occasions when they needed to find something on Data Hub. So I asked myself, like, uh, I was told uh, that data discovery was a problem at Geotab, but uh, it turns out the scope was POC, it was poorly established, and I made a very naive decision to blindly uh, accept the comment uh, that someone else uh, said and took the scope uh, from Calibra POC, which was also an unsuc unsuccessful POC. So for the past few months, I did uh, digging on my own uh, to learn what's really going on behind the scenes. Uh, so just to give uh, you guys some overview of uh, what data journey was uh, like uh, from uh, 50 thousand feet view. Uh, Geotap grew very fast, 500% uh, growth rate in revenue and size in five years fast. Uh, within that time, uh, Geotap acquired five different companies which contributed to not only growth in revenue and size, but also the complexity of data architecture uh, and data management and governance structure. 
So until today, uh, Geotab, uh, like general data pet, uh, practice at Geotab is done in silos. Uh, most people work with uh, the data that they have within their team and department to drive the insights without requiring much insight into the other data available within other parts of the organization. Uh, teams are so big and they work with relatively small sets of data uh, and have strong tribal knowledge of what data to use or who to reach out to ask questions within their domain. And this was the uh, one of the key reasons why users from POC, uh, first POC didn't have uh, the need to uh, need for uh, need to search for what they need to uh, do what they need on data. <clears throat> and many teams uh, don't have data management or governance structure and ones that do, they are using different tools, processes to integrate, store, and drive data. One of the pain points I had uh, was uh, less than 5% of data at Geotap had concept of ownership, uh, which made it very difficult to do further analysis on what steps we would need to take to uh, onboard meaningful and searchable data sets on Data Hub. So uh, the past few months, I spent most of my time talking to people from other departments to understand where we're, uh, to understand where we are in terms of data management, uh, then made a proposal on uh, what we would need to do uh, to change, uh, what we would need to change from architectural perspective, integration, security, compliance, operations, and metadata management perspective. Uh, I took a couple of us a uh, few, mo uh, few months to get all the buy-ins from uh, across all departments. And uh, now we have a new team called Data Ops, which uh, focuses on improving interoperability among data tools, uh, processes, and people uh, using metadata. So in 2021, uh, one of our goal is to productionize Data Hub. Uh, we're currently working closely with Shushanka's team, uh, John and Gabe, uh, to learn more about uh, their React app and uh, assisting them um, bit by bit uh, in uh, building React application. And once we're comfortable with the app uh, in the testing environment, we're planning on productionizing Data Hub at Geotab. And internally, uh, we had a debate on whether to allow anyone to push any data sets within Geotab, uh, but the decision was to make only the production data sets available on Data Hub. Uh, there isn't a right answer for choosing one over the other, but uh, we, de we decided to put more emphasis on production level data set, uh, which follows our internal data ops processes to ensure relevant metadata is captured on data integrity, ownership, security, and compliance. Basically, what we're saying is uh, that we want our users to only be able to find, uh, find and use the data we know is in good quality uh, within the risk tolerance level that we define. Uh, also, we think Data Hub can be more than uh, just a data catalog uh, at Geotab. Uh, data Hub's generalized uh, metadata model allowed us to start conversation with other departments uh, at Geotab to model custom entities that they want to catalog uh, while capturing meaningful relationships with other data hub entities. So basically we uh, are discussing uh, and we'll be treating data hub as uh, internal open source project. Uh, so other department uh, dev teams also can contribute to uh, internal, uh, internal features and uh, custom entities. Some entities and aspects that we're thinking of modeling this year are systems and applications, APIs, RBAC, uh, projects, and service accounts. Uh, we're still very new in open source journey, uh, but our plan is to make meaningful contributions to the community as much as possible. Uh, we just started to contribute to uh, the open source React app application. Uh, we made a couple of contributions the past couple of weeks, but hopefully the numbers will grow over time. Uh, we're not adding too much value at this point in time, but uh, we're slowly shifting towards an open source first mindset to generalize, generalize our use case as much as possible to find the opportunities to uh, contribute back to the community while solving our internal problems uh, at the same time. So uh, these are some of the wish lists uh, before I close. Uh, 
I think I mentioned in the Slack channel that uh, hopefully we can have the uh, roadmap timelines updated on the open source Git repo. And I, uh, one of the pain points when we were having discussions uh, like internally with other departments was that uh, there wasn't a really easy way for us to uh, understand quickly uh, what uh, entities, aspects, and properties are available, currently available in Data Hub. Uh, so we can minimize the redundant effort when we create new custom entities. So hopefully the metadata model to graph uh, with graph visualization to uh, kind of help uh, the community members to uh, quickly see uh, what uh, entities and aspects and properties are, are available and uh, what the relationship between them um, among them uh, is would be very helpful uh, in my opinion. And column level lineage uh, is something that we've been tackling internally uh, to uh, ask ourselves like how, like what would be the most efficient and uh, automated way to uh, first capture the column level relationship. So when uh, the feature is available on data, we can uh, readily uh, surface it. And social feature has been like one of the uh, hot discussion internally, but uh, I know like uh, most of the commercial products have this feature, um, but it's not the uh, most like high priority uh, item on our like backlog, but uh, I think it would be, it would be very valuable uh, for data hub uh, community as well. And that's about it. Anyone, does anyone have any questions? Cool. That was great, uh, John. Thanks for uh, sharing the journey, I think. This uh, I can relate to definitely a lot of those uh, challenges and concerns. The one thing that we've had quite a lot of debates about uh, with a lot of teams, uh, especially central teams, is exactly this uh, uh, rationalizing of do we only put the clean data in Data Hub, meaning the clean metadata in Data Hub? or do we actually put everything in there and then have the clean data rise to the top and use that as a way to drive data governance? Uh, so that's something that's definitely on my mind. Uh, it's, uh, it's a big topic of debate in lots of communities as well. If I can just quickly jump in, uh, my team built Airbnb data portal at Airbnb and we went through a similar uh, decision-making process. And there's something magical that happens when you have you know, more than 200 weekly active users of your product, you'll find the right blend of trusted data sets and data sets that people uh, want to be productive with. So I, I, I believe it's just about growing usage uh, and the, the quality of data sets questions will settle itself once you get the experts using the tool. Yeah, we we encountered the same the same challenge here in Amazon with with our clients, and what we found that works better is to have the responsibility for the publisher of the data sets that they need to tell if the data is reliable, etc. Because it's also relate like we see a lot of customers and, and even our internal team like building a feature store, right? So is this data set is something that you can rely for your reporting or BI. So we push it to the publishers and the subscriber and we just create like, um, um, you know, JSON that, that define the contract between the publisher and the subscriber about the data set. So we try to, you use technology to enforce it, but what I've seen that you always need the man in the middle, like the data steward or or someone from legal to tell, okay, can you actually publish this data, etc. because the challenge is that you don't know what is the intention of the consumer of the data, what they want to do with it. So this is why, thus I agree with you, like you're debating. So we said, let's bring the publisher, the, they are their owner of the data, so the, they have the responsibility. Um, happy to share like maybe in the next meetup, like like some architecture or somehow we, we solve it in several use cases. And um, we, again, like you mentioned Colibra at Leon, like we saw, 
you know, we are looking on all these third parties and customers and we always get into this, like there is the man in the middle or processes that needs to be enforced somehow. So I agree with you in the comment. Absolutely. We'll take you up on that offer, uh, Roy. Yeah, great. Okay. All right. If there are no more questions, we'll go over to the...